right, and welcome everyone to session 13 of Trials of Solaria, Broken Oaths. We are still waiting on Brian, but you know what? We're just going to get started without him. Because, you know, you snooze, and you get a picture of Dare Wolf. Two of them. Um, it's like double double vision. You got me as a wolf. You know, let's talk for a second about furries. Like, I... Like, just, no, just, just hear me out, alright? I think it's a little weird... But also, like, you do this too often. Whatever <laughs> you're into, and I, I really want to make a wolf costume. I'm just gonna start. I like. How do you get started? Like, if there's anyone I, in the community, you, know, I, you already I, got started. I know some, anyone I know in the some. community that knows I, how I to know make some, a wolf costume, I know some people. Already. I can. I can. Just, just, uh, I just need a I referral. Can get you hooked up. Just I can so I can also ask. Get you hooked up. Look, I'm I not saying I'm not. I'm not going to get into the weirdness. You know, I'm not going to get into the things. I just think it'd be cool to dress up as a giant wolf because I am the wolf. Yeah. Like I want it to like I want like the brown fur. I want him to have glasses. I want to walk around with like a set of dice and be like, "Oh, look at hey, me! I'm a giant wolf. Brian, it's going to be time. great. It's going to be great." Brian, we're talking about we're talking about we are talking about how the overlay furries. is all screwed up. No, we're talking about furries. All right, and we're talking about how their wolf is a closeted fur. I, I so I don't have a furry costume, but like I think I think I want to give it a shot sometime. Like you know what you gotta try. I, I, I'll try anything eight times. That's all I'm saying. Yes. I'll try anything eight times. Absolutely. That is that is where we're at. All right. I support you. And I support you supporting me. And I love that. But anyway, enough out of me. Hey everybody, welcome to Trials of Solaria: Broken Oaths. This is session thirteen. We're actually nearing the end of this adventure uh, because it is a canonical adventure that is running alongside a game that is not streamed called The Children of Solaria. I've been running these games as a kind of practice for an eventual game that I'll be running here. Hopefully, you'll see these four fine gentlemen taking part in those adventures. Mainly, mainly Blau, because his head is so shiny and I love it. And I love you, dude. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> He's like, fuck you, guys. What is wrong? I love you. It's just beautiful. I'm shaved today. It, just, it just, re <laughs> just reminds me that you know, light does exist. And uh, it's a beautiful thing in the darkness. But no, with that being said. Which is my catchphrase. Um, these guys are awesome. I'm going to be running a game here starting later this year, or very early, uh, very late this year, or very early next year, called The Roaring Shores. It's going to be a Pathfinder 1E actual play. They're going to be three to four games running canonically together, and all of them will be interacting with each other, and there'll be crossovers. We'll have players like jumping back and forth, and it's going to be a huge, huge campaign. And I hope that all these folks will be here, and I hope that you, the viewers, will be involved as well. Uh, I've got some ideas, but anyway, I digress. That's another one of my sayings. We're going to pivot over. There it is. I'm going to use all of them in the first 30 seconds, so that's good. We're going to have everybody introduce themselves. Then we're going to dive right into session 13, which is entitled The March to Lindsington, because a certain group of adventurers, allies, council members, the new Council of Solaria, uh, sent off for some, some old allies and got a response. Over 200 soldiers have arrived. But with that being said... Let's everybody introduce themselves. Let's go from Brian, Axel, Blau to Chewbacca. Brian, take it away, my dude. Uh, hello, I am Brian. I am at Mind Over Brian on both Twitter and on Twitch. Although on Twitch, I spell it with a zero. And I am playing um, Ven Wavar Halibrand, our human passing Asimar sorcerer, who has a bit of a shady past, but has current, uh, recently become somewhat of a, uh, what do I want, um, infamous play character they write maybe well i didn't write it you produced it right i'm a yeah i'm a producer that's what uh, it is. you are you are a, a contributor monetarily speaking yeah. permando and his group of thespians did it which is great but anyway axel take it away me next uh yeah i am axel the recap star mm. and uh i play mikhail who is uh, the Kitsuna entrepreneur of the party, who does not have a shady past at all. Don't listen to the rumors. Uh, they are an esteemed council member and business person. And that's all. I'm Joe. I'm playing Eckhard Gerst, the Abadarian war priest, who is also an esteemed question mark council member. <laughs> Shady past. <laughs> I, I definitely no shady past in this one. Uh, <laughs> he he, he might have stolen like a pack of gum once and then gotten slapped for it. Uh, it felt really bad. Yeah, and also felt bad. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see who we got next. Uh, Drubaka, you're the man. Uh, hi, I'm Drew. I'm playing Bix, the uh, gnome hunter, and his best friend Polly, mm. who is a weasel. He's adorable. 
and wonderful. He's the best. We love him. He's the, truly the heart and soul of the uh, campaign. Like man, man fully understands human speech. It's strange. Yeah, it's real weird. It's real. Yeah, weird. it's so strange for an animal to understand human speech. Yeah, the, the, the your horse. horse. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to think about the horse. I'm going to sleep. All right. I try to keep it out of my mind. Winnie. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm hungry, Winnie. <laughs> I like uh, how we've never explained that. We yeah, just let I it happen. That's a thread. I don't. We never we're never going to pull at that thread. It's never going to be explained. Never. Where's just the druid? I just, you throw me, throw me a druid and I'll find out. <laughs> Is he possessed? Is he not possessed? We don't know what's going on. It's totally fine. Anywho, so. We last left off for Intrepid Adventurers. It was roughly two weeks, week to two weeks prior. You had sent word north to the town of Restov. And in Restov, there is a, well, there are some old allies. Um, one of the sword lords, Jamundi. She um, was friends with the queen's father. Or the queen sent a message to her father requesting aid. Rather than just send some weapons, rather than just send a couple of folks, you actually got effectively a full army. Over 200, close to 250 troops. Well-trained soldiers, not just your you know, swashbuckling mercenaries. These are soldiers that are trained. You have over a dozen sergeants, lieutenants, leaders that can help guide this army. They are trained both in, you know, open field combat. They are trained in subterfuge, sneaking in. I know there's a couple different ideas, but I'd like to open our scene, as we often do, with a bird's eye view of Varnholden. As we look down onto Varnholden to the town square, we see this massive group of soldiers that have set up kind of like tents and, um, you know, sleeping arrangements and whatnot. And the citizens of Varnhold have all come together to support them. They are helping feed and water, keeping them, you know, giving them clothing if they need it, beds, places to sleep. You know, the entire city has really rallied around this, this army. They are calling it the New Army of Solaria. And I'd like to know... Eckerd, where would you be in the midst of all of this, I guess, happening? Probably all over the place without any sleep. Uh, Only a fortitude like you save. Wouldn't... Oh, no. You had to say it. Not awful. Um... You are groggy, but you're not fatigued. You're pretty sure another right. day or two of this and you're going to start to become fatigued. You've been up for like 48, maybe close to 50 hours. Um, but yeah, no, he's just running around trying to get shit together. Mm -hmm. uh, like he, you know, he'd go into Bix to try, try to find woodsmen and huntsmen and go into, you know, definitely liaising with uh, mm -hmm. Mikhail to make sure the intel is all in, all in order. I'd like to see that scene. So Bix... You've been perhaps, you know, working in the city, outside of the city. Maybe you've gone, done some traveling. In fact, why don't you tell me, what have you done to help prepare for this march to Lensington? If you do recall, I'm going to move you guys over to the map of Solaria. You had done a little bit of scouting. You had traveled south from Varnhold, down around the mountain pass, and you had traveled to a point where the mountain range is somewhat narrow. It's a very narrow, kind of thin range. There's no real valley, there's no passage like the Varnhold Pass was at one point, but there is an area where you could find a path up and over the mountains. You'd have to then skirt the edge of Lake Silversteep, but mm -hmm. it would give you an opportunity to get to... Lindsington. It's actually, you know, relatively pretty close to where you'd want to be traveling. You'd be traveling in between the Grundir and the Little Selin River, but it would give you a straight shot west towards the city. Um, Bix has been uh, mostly uh, kind of recruiting a uh, like a scouting corps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just, you know, uh, an army needs scouts, mm -hmm. and then He's been, uh, you know, training and uh, scouting with them, uh, you know, checking the checking the passes, seeing if anything else has opened up, mm -hmm. uh, looking for um, any possible, you know, other scouts from 
other cities or mm -hmm. kingdoms or whatnot. I love that. Uh, so I'd like to have a moment where you've just returned from one of these scouting missions, and it was mostly done south of the city of Varnhold along this mountain range. Uh, one of the scouts suggested that you could travel up the river uh, that runs through Varnhold, and it seems to have its source near the center of the mountains. However, I'm going to have you make a survival check or a knowledge geography, whichever your preference, to determine whether or not that might be a good idea, because that would save you likely a couple of days of traveling around south around this mountain pass. It would be more of a straight shot over the mountains. Uh, or knowledge geography. You either said? one, either one that's better for uh, you, whichever you prefer. Definitely going to be survival. Perfect. Love that. 31. Nice. So what you determine, Bex, with that survival check is it could work. However, the terrain through this directly south mountain pass, you're pretty sure you saw some relatively large tracks of either some waverins. Um, it could even have been maybe a large-sized dragon. Now, you haven't seen any dragon sightings. You haven't seen any wavering sightings as well, but it just... Uh, it seems like, you know, you found, found a couple of corpses. There were a few... Just mm -hmm. there, was some, mm -hmm. there was some indication there may be a large reptile of some sort in that area. Um, you did not notice anything if you skirted south. Now, the benefit, the trade-off of those two things is if you go directly south, you'll be able to get to Lindington quicker. If you take time... You know, it's going to take longer to get there if rumors of an army marching on Lincington gets over the mountain. So it, it's 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 a trade-off. You have to determine what's going to be best for you, and that might be something that you discuss with Blau, who you see Eckerd. Excuse me, not Blau. No, you actually see Blau in the game. He's like, how did I get into a yeah. fantasy world? You see Eckerd, and as you described yourself, Eckerd, you look very tired, somewhat haggard. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give you two a moment to have a moment, as it were, as... Drubaka, Bix, you bring this information back. Okay. Um, so uh I've I've had a report from one of our scouts that um there might be a pass going up and over uh one of the mountains uh here, and he points it out on the uh map. on the map. Uh Thanks. that would save us it would save us a considerable amount of time, but um there are some tracks there that I don't trust. Uh, it's either um, a large wyvern or perhaps even a small dragon. Um, I don't know. It would save us like a, a butt ton, like three or four days and like give us a whole lot more surprise getting over it. But I don't know if we want to trust you know, trust the possibility of having to deal with a worm of some sort. Is there any way we could tell if it's a dragon or a wyvern? I uh, kind of, you know, rubs his temples. I feel like we might be able to handle a wyvern on our uh, own, but a dragon is probably out of our league. I mean, it's, it's a small. Everything I've heard of them. Uh, I can send more scouts to look. Uh, nobody's actually seen it though um is do either of you have knowledge history or knowledge local i'll accept either of those uh, i think i have knowledge local right. no no i have knowledge yep. nature mm -hmm. and knowledge geography okay. sadly the only knowledge of war priests get are engineering and religion so i'm going to give this to you though because it's not necessarily common knowledge but being as part of the council being maybe a little bit more knowledgeable there are rumors and there's some tales that at one point the council actually interacted with a dragon way back in the day. So about a 10 years ago, some of the council members did interact, but it was a silver dragon that they had a run in with. Um, so those are tend to be good aligned, good dragons. But it had also been hunting and looking for a black dragon. Now that black dragon was never found. It's never been seen. There haven't been any reports, but... Dragons do tend to, oh, I don't know, sleep for a long time on their pile of and, gold. And be fairly territorial. Do you think the the queen would know more about this, maybe? Or um, maybe the high priestess? You'd probably go talk to them. I don't know if the high priestess knows anything, but if the... the uh, you said it was I, the king that interacted with it? Mm -hmm. Oh, the old council, sorry. Mm -hmm. The old council, yep. I, I think 
I think the high priestess might know more about a lot of things than you might give her credit for. <laughs> this is That's fair. Crazy. I love that. This is fair. For that. reasons that are well beyond the scope of what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, let's go have a chat with them at the very least. Uh, if, like I said, if it's a dragon and a good one, we might be able to negotiate our way past, but and a wyvern might be able to fight our way past. But I don't think we're going to take a black dragon. I mean, we could try, but. I mean, let's go. Yeah. Beautiful. And I think that's a good moment, as is tradition that I say, to pivot away from the two of them as they head off towards the Queen's, I suppose, estate, council chamber, whatever you want to call it, the old mayor's manor that she's converted into her base of operations. You guys head off to there. I'd like to follow along the road kind of north east, or excuse me, northwest up towards the Clumsy Bear, where we are going to see, well, where would you guys have put Lindsay? Yeah, yeah, you've got this old council member. She seems a little crazy. Um, Very did crazy. we ever find out what kind of relationship she had with uh, the queen? Good. She was the grand diplomat for many years in Solaria until, you know, the fall of Solaria and... She apparently was thought to be dead. At least that's what all rumors and all indications were. But apparently she's been alive, but suffering from either amnesia or madness. Definitely madness. Uh, maybe we should have um, our uh, business person uh, broach the subject of uh, former council members mm. Um, mm. with the queen mm. uh, in the you know, in the the uh, theoretical sense, like, hey, what if we found some of these council members who would be the best ones to try and maybe look for? I love that idea. And what I also love is that we're going to cut to a scene of the Clumsy Bear, where if you remember last time, Sigbert had said he had to leave on urgent business and would be gone for a time as it were. Yes. So that leaves a certain Mikael, who was an investor into the Clumsy Bear, in charge. Now, yeah. I'm just going to go out of the lane. I... Please mm -hmm. go ahead, Axel. I was going to say that I would have probably been spending some time finding a replacement innkeeper to, you know, be in charge while I'm gone, because I'm going on war, apparently. I love that. I'm going on a war. <laughs> yeah, uh, glorious. <laughs> Absolutely glorious. I'm going on a war. So yeah. I love that. We're going to cut to a scene. You've been working with the in the tavern. There's obviously some staff that works in it as well. There's a couple of waiters, some, some bartender, a bartender. There's a couple of waitresses, etc. However, I'd like you, Axel, to tell us how does Mikael handle being in charge of the clumsy bear you've been doing it for let's say four or five days since sigbert left how is it going for mikhail is he is he leaning into it is he like struggling keeping everything organized he is a business person so i'd like to know from you uh well as far as i'm aware everyone loves them because they give out free drinks apparently and they mm -hmm. buy the whole town uh like <laughs> they host a party from the whole, whole town um so yeah, I mean, they've mostly been running, taking an administrative position. They don't do a lot of actually standing behind the bar and taking orders. They 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 tell people what to do. They've probably been like trying out a few different innkeepers, like rotating through them. I I imagine a montage of interviews of crazy yeah. people oh, yeah. applying to be an innkeeper. <laughs> Been an in I've been an innkeeper in the great city of Absalom! Yes, uh, is it possible to lower the volume a bit? I hear some of our customers do not appreciate being woken up in the middle of the night. What are, um, your, what are your rules on fleas? Uh, certainly not allowed. I quit! Ah! And he runs off. Understandable. Yeah. Next! <laughs> yes. uh, the next person to walk you? into the little interview room is none other mm -hmm. than, well, a small halfling with a bit of a twitch in her eye. And she walks over, still cradling the broken lute that she carries around with her. 
She sets it on the table and sits down in front of Mikael. Lindsay, what a nice surprise. Uh, what brings you to my office? I, I understand. I, you're looking for someone to run this place, yes? Yes, indeed. Would you happen to know someone? I was thinking maybe I could run it. You could. Is uh, well. Um, th what? That is a great idea. Would you mind telling me your qualifications? <laughs> I, I used to. I used to run an inn. In a past life. Before I went on the road and started writing about adventurers. It was my first job. Hmm. Lindsay, I, of course, I have uh, nothing but the utmost faith in you, of course, but it, uh, me and uh, the other council members were sort of assuming, I suppose, that you would prefer to return to a position in the council. We could talk to the queen and make something happen begins to shake her head vigorously back and forth, indicating no. You would not want to be in the council. You would prefer to be an innkeeper at the clumsy bear. She nods her head vigorously up and down, indicating yes. Well, uh, you are hired. But I offer my hand. To A genuine hand smile you. crosses her face. The kind of twitches for a moment. She's got this little bit of a tick. And she extends, shaking her hand very weakly. But she says, can I start today? Of course, please. I, I am positively swamped. I have a lot of things to do. And, well, I leave the inn to your very capable hands. She takes the lute that she's been carrying, the neck still broken, the strings still all cattywampus. She places it on the table and slides it over. Could you hold on to that for me? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, would you not like me to get it fixed or get you a new one, perhaps? She shakes her head vigorously, no. You know that Very well. topaz you carry in your pocket? Yeah. <laughs> it is shocking you right now. Uh... And that <laughs> voice of a certain magister, a certain wizard, Elven wizard named Muriel is like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, that's easy, that's I Lindsay, the goddamn diplomat, grand diplomat of Solari, and you're gonna have her be now. a fucking innkeeper in some podunk town in Varnhold? What is well, wrong with you? It's like screaming you in your head right now. Appear to be stuck in a topaz right now, so I believe you have no say in this, Grand Master. You hear? You feel another shock. And I need you to give me a uh, a quick reflex save. Quick reflex save. All right. <laughs> Is this how you want to play it, Muriel? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I might end up leaving you in a ditch somewhere. Oh, oh, what a twist. So you feel the kind of like the electrical charge like building up in the pocket and you're able to like grab it and like flick it in the air and as you flick it in the air it does a little like flip thing it shocks like a little electric shock comes around you catch it and then place it back in your pocket and it's one swift motion and you hear Muriel go I'll get you yes. next time fucking fuck it feels like I'm used to this at this point oh yeah I it's been happening a lot <laughs> she's angry and sassy <laughs> uh, alright well I have my innkeeper so I'm happy it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and where would you want to go after that, Mikael? You've got an innkeeper. Lindsay takes over right away. She's a bit demure, uh, a bit quiet to begin, but quickly falls into a kind of, you do this, you do that. She is nice. stern, but not aggressive in the way that she leads. So, Very good. Yeah. Uh, well, next I'm planning to... Uh, is Sigbert already gone? Oh, he's been I gone for like four or five I... days. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I next thing I want to do at some point is go talk to the high priestess. So love it. So then the three of you are now converging on the high priestess, who happens to be with the queen because that's cinematically appropriate. I'd like to go and find Venavar. Where the hell is Venavar? This army's arrived. The 
traveling troop is getting ready to travel, which is awesome. What's Venevar up to right now? Uh, what? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Ben is trying to avoid as much official responsibility as possible. Uh, and in fact, he's got his um, his assistant running inter interference on anyone who wants to talk to him. Um, he's um, otherwise he's just sort of lounging around at the, probably at the clumsy bear. Yeah. Just you know, drinking. So one of the fans of the play slash musical slash rock opera that you've put on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, comes running towards you and playing defense you watch as a certain brown haired daughter uh durani miss durani slides in front of him and says i'm sorry um mr venivar is not seeing any guests right now if you'd like to set up an appointment for a uh signature slash autograph you'll have to come back on the second tuesday of next month and the person's like but i want one now and she's like I'm sorry he's not seeing anybody. This is his quiet time, and I need you to step back. And there's like a little back and forth. The person looks very disappointed, but then eventually gives up. And then he, she turns back to him, gives you two thumbs up, and then goes back to her business. However, Mikhail, you excellent, do see Ven. Excellent. You do see Ven. Would you interact yes, with him? Would yeah. you Would you maybe drag him along with you, or would you just let him do his thing? Sure, I will sneak up to the little bugger who's been avoiding responsibility. Give us a give us a stealth check. Let's see if uh, a certain assistant of his notices you approaching. I'm gonna guess no, but I'll give her I'll uh, give her a perception check. Yeah, let's she got thirteen. She probably sees you. That's a damn good roll. Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> You're able to get up right next to him. You could like give him two wet willies, and by the time you realize he's getting a wet willy, you'd be gone. That's how good that stealth check was. It was perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad my good rolls are on things like this. Uh, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Nice. So I, so I sneak up to, to Ven, and I poke him on the back. Ven, we were. <laughs> so this is where uh, you've yes. been hiding. Hi. This is, I, if you, this is you're calling this hiding? Sure. Yes. Well, um, have you been preparing yourself for the for the upcoming mission? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not aware. You mean the taking the troop to Lindsington? I sure do. Yes. You you will be joining us, of course. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I couldn't let the troop go without me. Of course. I'm the I'm, a, I'm a valued Vanhoek. investor. Yes. Um. Very well. I was about to head to the manor and uh, check on things so would you like to come with me perhaps maybe we could even find something useful for you to do i'm 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 feeling pretty good about what i'm doing right now but i mean if you want some company i i can see that oh i yes i am very lonely i would appreciate someone walking with me. Mm -hmm. okay your assistant looks over and gives you the could i distract him look uh no uh and Ven, Ven's like, uh, hey, I have a couple of scrolls that I want you to look over. Um, keep in mind that you're working on your magical talents. So that second one is a uh, disguised person scroll. So be very careful with it. Um... <laughs> Entwa, Turbani, Goshta, Elboy. And you watch as she transforms and looks uh, and looks like her father with one arm and everything. Oh. <laughs> It work? I, added, I don't added think you got my, it right. You're missing an arm. Oh shit! I added in my head canon that Mikhail has, has worked with, with the the fabric company. Oh, yeah. That oh yeah, oh right yeah, now. absolutely. I think that's brilliant. I so love. So they that. go, ah, oh, daddy. Hmm. How curious. <laughs> and <Are> you, <laughs> yeah, they, they start having a conversation. I imagine, but yeah, you can. Find I like that. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll pivot. We'll pivot. We'll pivot. I, uh, we're going to pivot over to the manor. And in the manor, we have the we have the high priestess, we have the queen, we have well, we have really the whole gang. The whole gang is there: Bix and Mikael and Venevar and the queen, everybody. Wow! And as you enter in, the queen and Dawkin, they are they appear to be going over some notes. Uh, about the upcoming march and as they see bix and eckerd and along with everyone else enter in the queen she's oftentimes been very 
very stern. She's kind of a serious woman. But in this moment, she is, she smiles and um, greets you all very warmly, actually. Ha! Ah, my glorious council. Welcome. What of the troops? Is everyone prepared for the march? Troops are ready, but uh, the path might not be. And Vix, that... you said something of a Oh, uh, yeah, he uh, he breaks down the uh, the issues involving the uh, uh, the shortcut pass that they've found. Hmm. So it would appear our two options are a shorter distance and thus a greater chance of surprise upon the town of Lensington and its current occupiers. Or a longer distance without any risk of, well, conflict Dracon before we arrive at the city walls. Draconic entanglements are, uh, are, de are definitely a thing that we should try to avoid if we can, I suppose. The uh, High Priestess <sighs> seems very pensive in this moment. She seems like she's thinking. She's got her hand up to her face, kind of doing one of those, like, taps on her lower lip. But she doesn't say anything. Do you do you know anything about um, any possible... Does, uh, does anyone else know anything about uh, possible uh, draconic influences in this area? Uh, and he What's... pointedly does not look at the uh, high priestess. What's the check for? Uh, knowledge local or knowledge history? Mm. No. Oh yeah, I forgot Ven can't roll over a nine. <laughs> hmm. The queen will speak up first. My husband, during his foray into Vonhold, during the Vonhold vanishing, made mention that they interacted with a silver dragon at one point. It had been hunting a rather large and elusive black dragon. However, that was all that I heard of it. And other than several black dragons that are king and council defeated west of here, there haven't been any sightings or any rumors or any mention of any black winged reptiles in close to eight years. Has, uh, uh, Bix looks around and says, has anyone heard anything from the silver dragon? Shakes, shakes up their head, no. If the black dragon was larger, do we have the dimensions of the track? Could we tell which one it was by that? With that survival check that Bix made earlier, if it was a black dragon, it was large size. Uh, and the one, the one that was being hunted was not a large one, was it? It was never indicated. The queen doesn't know. Well, I am no military strategist, but I do know that the element of surprise is quite invaluable in such situations. We do have an army. Would this dragon pose much of a threat to it? Um, probably. I don't think they'd do a whole lot of stop if we just made strafing runs. Uh, we don't have a lot of um, magical firepower, so to speak. And that's the kind of thing we would need to take on a dragon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should we go out there on our own and take a look? Uh, I wouldn't be against it. Um, uh, <laughs> at least at least for a scouting run. Uh Black dragons are intelligent, yes? Perhaps we could negotiate with it? Any chance? Um, they're intelligent, but highly, highly evil. 
They're supposedly real big dicks. Hmm. Well, I'm sure every intelligent being has a price, but it, if it is likely we are to be betrayed by this creature, then uh, I agree it is not such a good idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we could trust it. Hmm. Very well. Take Perhaps a look at we it, could uh, use the pretense of diplomacy to uh, catch it off guard and take it out. Uh, I have no problem if, with that. If you want to go fight a black dragon, you are welcome to do that. But I uh, am mostly firepowered, so um, I would be useless in that fight. So you don't want to bring me. Are you not the closest thing we have to a, a ranged specialist? Uh, yeah, but if you weren't listening, I I throw fire, uh, and black dragons are not are not particularly vulnerable to fire. And I'm okay. really have, vulnerable to giant teeth. You have recently been known to carry a musket with you, no? Uh, you want me to bring one musket against a dragon? Fucking chuckles at that. If we do decide I am to go, not the king. if we do decide to go, I'll be happy to accompany you all as well. Hmm. Ooh, two muskets against a dragon. That is the Talking confidence I, of I, I like to hear. Talking gives the like the like, what do you want from me? I'm trying to help. <laughs> Well, uh, of course, I too would prefer to avoid such an encounter. I am uh, very unskilled at combat. So I propose we find any way we can to circumvent it. Yes? You can hope it's uh, the if, silver one. Heads up, the time you're wasting with us going out to investigate this dragon, we could just move the army the other way, and then we would not lose any time. I don't know if anybody's thought of that. But it's only going to save two, three days. That's the time it's going to take us to go out and investigate this dragon. High priest is fine. The army breaks. could just go that way. She finally breaks her silence. I understand I am not a military strategist, but I think fucking around with this dragon is a poor use of our time. Though we could arrive in Linsington quicker, I think skirting the edge of this dragon's potential dragon's territory. And then coming in with the risk of being seen is a better use of our time and resources than potentially losing the new council. However, I leave it up to you all to make your decisions. This is fair enough, though. The army's not at risk of detection camped, on, out, camped outside the city. It's at risk of detection once we cross the mountains. And I imagine the time will be about the same, regardless of what pass we use, from that pass or the farther one to Lindsingdon. I, I agree. I think the dragon's more of a distraction than anything. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's Queen. let's give it the skip. Queen butts in. With that being said, don't dragons often sit on massive hordes of treasure, weapons, gold? If there is a dragon, or if there was a dragon, perhaps somewhere in the mountains there is a horde waiting to be discovered. Such a thing could be very useful in the war effort. Good, but likely after we handle Linsington, the gold won't help us if we're all dead. And looking for it would likely take even more time. Hmm. Dark and butts That's... in. Then it's decided. We ignore the dragon. We march the army directly south, take the narrow pass south of Silver Steep, and then we cross over and make our way towards Lensington. Indeed. Um, Have the engineers sent out today. Have them prepare the pass. Ignore Gen for now. We can come back to it later. General, is the army ready to depart? The army's ready to go, but I think the pass needs a couple of days from the engineers so they can make it. Very well. That, and it can be supplied. Very well. And let us make final preparations and prepare to head out. The Queen acknowledges, the High Priestess acknowledges, Dawkin acknowledges. Any final thoughts from the Council before you prepare to head out? Uh, I just want to like clarify, to have... I'm not a member of the Council, right? Uh, uh... 
that's you. you maybe are, it's a gray area. You are like a gray area member of the council. Like you, you're, you, you, your opinion is asked for occasionally, mm. and you show up to meetings, whether or not it's been official and signed, like uh, a certain Eckerd and a certain Mikael, less so. Mm-hmm. Bix, Bix is in the, co- Bix, the council. Bix is the <laughs> official like high scout of the council. That's where we're at. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I would like to have a private chat with the High Priestess if we get a chance. You may do so. You may do so. And as everyone departs, does anyone else have anything else they want to ask prior to departing? Beautiful. Oh. So as you depart, everyone else departs, the High Priestess lingers. You maybe give her a look, Mikael. And mm-hmm. as you, as everyone else shuffles out of the meeting chamber, she plays with that little ring on her finger that she wears, a certain little symbol on it that you'd recognize as an organization that doesn't exist. But she says, A petty for your thoughts, Mikhail? Yes, uh, well, I would uh, be more interested to hear about your thoughts, of course. Um, I had the intention of asking whether you have any contacts I should know about in Linsington. Before we head out? I do. Several, in fact. I've also heard word from Fort Delarev. The children of Solaria have returned and been reunited with one another. They intend to march northward through Tasselford and onward to Svetlania. They will destroy the head taker, at least that is the intent, as well as one of the final apostles. If we can coordinate our efforts in Linsington, and retake the city, and simultaneously, along with their help and their armies, we could converge upon Sunspire and take the, well, take the city in a two-pronged assault. I've also heard rumors that an army from Mendev, as well as armies from across the Inner Sea, are making their way to Mavon, assist us. Mavon. I will say Mendev, it's Mavon. Excuse me. <laughs> Mavon. Just south of the border. They are marching on uh, towards... S- Solaria, with, an, with intent to assist us in retaking the capital. Well, it looks like this whole thing is about to come to a close much earlier than expected, really. Sometimes but, things go well. Yes, uh, let us focus on the assault on Linsington to start with. How can I find these contacts of yours? Well, certain organization that does not exist has a certain passphrase that has never been uttered. And she will provide that passphrase to you. And you know what? I'm going to ask Chewbacca, since your original character of this Kingdom of Solaria was the original of these group that doesn't exist, what would the passphrase be? The, like... Like a code that you'd say to like, you know, like, flash, thunder kind of thing. Oh, um, it would be, uh, oh, um, I'm putting him on the spot. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. Uh, it would be something about ordering a drink. Um, yeah, probably, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it would be something ridiculous like a, uh, um, uh, ordering a uh, 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 elven gut shaker. Ah, so you order an <laughs> elven gut shaker, <laughs> and the it. person responds by s- saying, "Consider your gut shaken," and that is that is the response. It's good. It's good. I like yeah. It. Any I any like suggestion it. to go drink a elven gut shaker? Elven gut mm-hmm. shaker. It's beautiful. And so she will yes. explain that to you. And she also mentions that. While they cannot act before the army arrives, once the army arrives, and she understands that the general has made mention that some of the troops will sneak into the city to open the gates, once the general arrives with the army and they do that, then her agents, the agents, not her agents, the agents inside of the city can act to open up the inner castle. There's a, like a fort kind of inside the city. They can open those gates to allow entry so you can defeat the apostles that currently hold that city all right so that's where i should say the passcode at the gates to the fort correct okay hmm. uh right so I will, I will nod an appreciation and there is another matter as well 
uh, there is a young boy by the name of Perry in this city. If something were to happen to me on this mission, I would like for you to look after him, if it is not much to ask. She smiles at you. It's that kind of grandmotherly smile that she does very often. At this rate, I'll have an entire brood of children to look after. Well, for a woman of your talents, I'm sure it is not much to ask of. Mm. Consider it done, Mikael. And I hope Thank it you. won't be necessary for me to look after him. Oh, yes, yeah, same, of course. I have no desire to die. I plan to live a long life and a very successful business owner. <laughs> and I think the two of you would have a little conversation about how the clumsy bear is doing. She'd give you some advice on how to increase profits, because she is, after all, High Priest of Abadar. That's her, that's her MO. That is true. <laughs> now, as far as everyone else, any other scenes you'd like to have prior to us moving on a couple of days to where the army would be preparing to march and you'd be waiting on some word back from the engineers. Uh, none other than the note that Eckerd would, before they march, intend to take a very long sleep to be ready for actual combat and more sleepless nights. 30 ha 36 hours and a half later, Eckerd wakes up yes. feeling super refreshed. <laughs> super refreshed. Just in the um, Sits up like a vampire. <laughs> Bix would go uh, to the orphanage mm -hmm. uh, to check on uh, his friend from the uh, <laughs> from the night of the zombies. She's been uh, adopted. The... That's awesome. She's been adopted by actually one of the local noble families who has been uh, unable to conceive, and they adopted her. Okay, then he would go and check on her there. She uh, is very happy. Just to, you know, make sure everything's good. She calls uh, them new she's... mommy and new pappy. <laughs> uh, Hopefully that will wear out. They keep telling her to just say mama and papa, and she says, no, new mama and new papa. Uh, so he lets, uh, he lets her play with Polly while he... Make sure that uh, new mama and new papa are uh, properly uh, looking after her. Yeah, looking after her, and uh, uh, once he knows that, then he will go. Uh, you know, play with her a little bit more, and then go about his business. I love that you are a good person. Dare I say, a good, a good person. person. So. The good news is, is the... uh, Van offers yeah. Katarina a permanent position, and, uh, subject to her need. If she still wants to go to magic school, he'll write her a letter of recommendation uh, to one of the magic schools in Lindington once they're reopened after the conquest. She is totally down to clown. She she actually wants to learn magic, but is more interested in continuing to help build up the city of Varnhold. She likes assisting kind of with the war effort, with, with morale of the city. She's been taking on an active role of like setting up gigs for the troop. She She's like 50-50, like 60% into like being an assistant and like doing the business aspect and 40% magic. So like you're thinking she might be actually well, following in her father's footsteps a little bit more. Halibrand Productions uh, don't, won't have an office here unless you were to stay behind. So I guess if you decide to do that, I could leave a nest egg behind and yeah. uh, you could draw a salary from it and ensure that you're continuing to invest the, in the likely projects. I absolutely love that. <laughs> absolutely love that. And a certain Dan will also love that as well, I'm sure. Certainly will. But anything else anyone else would like to? We've got some sleeping. We've got some setting up a trust fund for her. We've got the scouting. Mikael has a new innkeeper in the way of Lindsay. What else we got going on? Anything else? Oh, Eckerd would make a point to say goodbye to uh, Sarah. Because she's definitely not coming with him on campaign. I'd like to have that scene. So you're heading back to the Mint. It's where Sarah's been staying. And as you get to Sarah's room, you can knock on the door and it opens and you see Sarah has a travel pack packed. 
She has her little sword, a little shield, ready to go. A mace. She's got a little mace. That's what she wields. And she's like, "Sorry, I, I, I wasn't ready, quite ready to pack, but I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm super excited. We're gonna go take back Lindsington and honor and glory and, and tax masting. Yeah." There's not a chance that the high priest is going to let me take you with you. Take you with me. Sorry, I can speak sometimes. What? She looks very shocked. What do you mean? I thought. There's but, not a chance the high priest will let me take you into an active war zone. But, but I'm your, your I'm your charge. I, I. And because you're my charge, I can't take you into an active war zone. I do. I. But I thought, I. But. Sarah, the time will come when you, when you can do these kind of things. But I, I couldn't have it on me. To have you fall to an apostle's spear before you ever finished your training. She is, she goes through the five stages of grief, like, takes five seconds, just like all five stages, second after another. And mm -hmm. then you see this acceptance cross her face, and in a very, more so like an adult, she looks like she looks very mature in this moment. She's oftentimes like that energetic, delightful, happy, rambunctious child. She looks extremely, she almost looks old in this moment. And she takes her pack, which she was starting to put on her back. Back, She slowly takes it off. She sets it on the bed, little cot. And crossing her hands in front of her, she looks at you and says, I understand. But I need you to understand something, Eckerd. If you don't come back, I'll hunt you down and kill you myself. And she will all but lunge at him, throwing a tight hug around his kind of midsection. And he through muffles, because her face is buried in his stomach, she says, thank you for everything. He'd hug her and he'd leave behind a, uh, a platinum holy symbol of Abadar. And say, if I never see you again, remember me by this. I'll give it to you when you return. Well, I hope I return. I spent quite a bit on it. <laughs> that gets a good laugh out of her. I love that. Beautiful, yeah. my man. Beautiful. All right. So we pivot over to a scene where we see the engineers have returned. The pass has been forged through that mountain. So it's not like a full Varnhold pass. Yeah, it's not out. a road. Yeah. Not a road, but there's a decent pass built so that the army can move like two by two, three by three kind of style. Mm -hmm. They do mention that they did build the pass through some old ruins that seem really, really old. Not sure exactly what they were. Seemed pretty chill. Didn't see anything while they were moving through it. But during one of the nights, they did hear some weird moans uh, or howls sure of some kind. It's probably nothing, I'm assuming. So <laughs> that's beautiful. But we're gonna yeah. kind of we're gonna kind of flash forward to it's been about four days of travel, and you're you're moving through the pass. You guys at the front, the army behind you, moving. You're starting to get into this kind of narrower area. And if you thought I was gonna let you get away without a fight. You're fucking wrong. So <laughs> it, may not, isn't riding it may not be a CR eleven is... black dragon, but it's gonna be something. All right. I was really hoping you guys would go for the black dragon. I was like, do it. Do it. I can murder them. It'll be beautiful. Not kidding. It's terrible. <laughs> but you are moving ben, through this pass. Go ahead, Van, please. It's not riding a horse. He has bought a cart, like a like a two wheeled like chariot thing. I love that. That he sits in and lets the thing draw mm -hmm. drag him along. Mm -hmm. With a little sunshade mm -hmm. and just fully enjoying the idea of being a, a rich producer. You're making money. You're making like, it's not a small amount. You're making like 500 to 600 GP a week. Like it is, that show is popular. Popular mm -hmm. with a lair. Emphasis on lair. I don't know why lair, but that's what it is. However, you guys are moving through the mountains. It is getting later in the evening and you've been marching for majority of the day. You skirted around that sort of eastern area you've pivoted west so you went south 
east and you pivoted south then you went sort of southwest and pivot up and you've traveled up and you're starting to travel up and over the mountain range you're actually near the peak near the top of the mountain where there's this kind of pass that's been built through and that pass is built through and actually heads into this kind of wide open area where there's this old ruin and these ruins looks to be maybe an old temple of some kind and the first thing you would notice of this temple is it appears to have been made for creatures roughly double the average medium humanoid size. It's very large, very large. But as you get close, the sun is beginning to set. It's likely time to make camp. But like everyone to make perception checks as you're moving into this area, moving into this area. Uh, so uh, as we kind of move into the area, I'm yeah. going to uh, uh, activate my aspect of the whichever one i'm trying aspect to of the badass i wanted to use uh eagle stag i think it's the eagle yeah falcon i think right same thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's falcon for perception yeah falcon. Mm, uh Manavar. and uh, mm -hmm. uh polly's gonna do it too do any of you speak cyclops <laughs> uh, it depends what language do Cyclops can speak. Cyclops. Cyclops. Well, then no, I only speak <laughs> common, speak, draconic, and sylvan. Speak, they speak giant. So they also speak Cyclops, but this is going to be in Cyclops. So you all hear this strange this whisper. Anyone that rolled over 20 hears this kind of strange whisper on the wind that's moving through us. this pass. But it is a language that you don't understand. It is sounds like it sort of sounds like giant but like with a very thick accent so thick that you can't understand any of the words if any of you happen to speak giant that hear this but we're gonna move over to i did a thing i created a two different types of maps we've got a battle map we've got a regular map but we're gonna pivot over to the battle map in this moment which is super exciting. We're going to see if I can get this. Everything's in there. All right. And now we're going to transition. Whoa! Look at how fancy that is. Let's go! We got a brand new map. I'm super, super professional streamer here. Super fun. We're going to move over to our battle map. So you all are going to be approaching from the south and the bottom of the map. And as you arrive in, I'm going to go ahead and drag some of you onto the map. You hear this whisper, and it sounds like a kind of angry moan and you don't understand it but as the sun begins to set just on like the other side of the mountain so you can't quite make it out There's a couple of higher peaks you see these kind of shadowy forms start to emerge up from out of yeah, the ground mage armor. and you see distinctly you see three of them begin to rise up and kind of start to lunge and lurch forward and mm. moan low and angrily. And you would recognize these as being some sort of undead knowledge, knowledge religion. Oh, everyone can see them now. Who cares about religion? And from behind you, no, no I'm untrained. You hear the army start to shout and scream. We're under attack. And you see several other large creatures beginning to attack the army. So we're going to kind of do this a little bit of a cinematic. The army is going to be attacked as well, but we're going to focus simply on your individual battle. So it's all happening simultaneously. But it appears that you are being attacked by none other than some zombie cyclopses. So we're going to see what happens. In fact, three of them in this moment. I'm going to go ahead and roll some initiative for these guys. Now, the good news is these guys' initiative... It's a one. It's not that good. So it'll probably be fine. And it's I, fine. This is fine. Nothing's this is wrong. totally fine. Yeah, but I rolled it too. Well, let's get some battle music going. And let's dive right into a little bit of combat. Is it playing? This is like the perfect terrain for Fennec Fox camouflage, I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. All right. So, you see these zombie cyclopses rise up. 
They look angry. Vix, you are up first. Uh. Oh shit. Um. I'm going to cast. Let me cast Entangle. Ooh. I will tell you this. There's not a whole lot of shrubbery around in this area. It is rock, dirt, and you're not sure if Entangled works well here. Entangled does rely upon natural vegetation. Okay. Let's see. Okay, uh, I guess I will cast uh, Gravity Bow. Ooh, bold choice card. Let's see if it pays off. And then I will... That's a standard action, so I get one more action, right? You get a move action. Uh, I'm going to dismount from Polly. Uh-huh. <whistles> And Polly I kisses will... in the direction of the zombie cyclopses. Uh, yeah, I will let that go for now. Perfect. Next up is none other than a certain Dawkin, who is currently fighting some of the other zombies behind you. We're going to let him be a part of the, the troops. He's fighting the zombies behind you. So, Mikael, you're up next. I can't believe I'm second in this fight with a 10. Uh, <laughs> all right. Impressive. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I don't really like these giant things. Um. <laughs> and I feel like now, I don't know if undead cyclops do this, but I know that giants typically throw r big rocks at things far away. Uh. So I'm just gonna hide <laughs> behind cover here. And I'm gonna use this cover to hide behind the other cover. Good and I will choice. stealth behind this pillar looking thing. Old choice. Old uh, choice. Should I roll my stealth now or do Yeah, you... roll that stealth now. Alright. Okay, pretty good. And yeah. That's pretty good. I could I will wait here. I could gurst. Do they appear to have any weapons, or just they zombie hands? They look to have zombie hands. All right, and Eckerd's going to go ahead and cast Iron Skin and march up uh, 30 feet. I love it. I love it. Do it. All right, next up we're going to get Do this it. zombie Cyclops here, who is going to take a step forward. Reaching down, it grabs, you guessed it, <laughs> a giant piece of rubble. And it sees a certain Eckerd Gurst standing right there, and it's going to chuck... A piece of rubble that Eckerd Gurst for an 11. It crashes into the pillar next to him, sending shards and trunks of stone everywhere. The creature just simply lets out a horrible, horrible moan. <laughs> kind of moan. And Venivar, you're up next. Uh, Ven will stand up in his little cart. Um, Looks so fancy in that cart. I love it. Uh, and then he's like... Suffer not the zombies to live. And then yeah. he points uh, and casts spontaneous immolation, uh, which will just cause it to spontaneously burst into flame. So that's this one. It, nice. Oops, that's right. I don't know what the wrong. This guy. Okay, okay, okay. I like, uh, I like it. The target takes 3d6 points of fire damage and catches on fire, okay. but a successful fortitude save reduces its damage by half. Uh, so that fortitude save is against a DC 16. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it. For nine points of fire damage. Oh, DC 16 fortitude save? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Half damage? Yeah. All right. That's still four points of damage as it bursts in flame. Now, is it on fire? No, it, it doesn't catch on fire if it makes okay. it safe. All right. This one here is going to take a step forward. Also, it's going to chuck a rock at Sir Eckerd because you're trespassing upon its unholy ground, Eckerd. Hates you. Good luck. Hates everything about you. It's gonna chuck its boulder. Twenty-one. No. 
Ooh, swing and a miss. It crashes into the ground next to you, sending shards and chunks of stone clanging upon your brand new full plate. Super yes. nice full plate. It's so good. Holly the Weasel's up next. Love full plate. Holly is... Oh, damn it. They're undead. That's going to be gross. They're so dead. They're so on. Okay. Uh, he is going to... Make them re-dead. Yeah. So, my wife is currently playing Stray, and she's like, I didn't expect this to be so emotional right off the rip. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it pulls the hard strings like five minutes in. It's real rough. Nice. All right, so Polly's going to run up, and he doesn't have... All he can do is... Uh... Where is it? Here we go. He's going to use his Claws of Shadow. Ooh. Holly's getting right in there. 14. You know what's crazy? A 14 is actually a hit. Because these are zombies. And they have terrible AC. It's all natural armor Yay. and no decks. So that is a hit for 9 damage. As the claws kind of look like they take on like these kind of black shadowy talons. He carves into the zombie. Just... It looks very upset about its life. Next up is a certain zombie cyclops that just got hit by Polly. And I'd like everyone to make a knowledge local check on cyclopses real quick. Untrained? Yeah, you can make it. I'll allow it. I've heard of Kingmaker having cyclops. Nope. Nope. Cyclops. Gail, you know cyclopses have a special ability called Flash of Insight. The immediate action. They can peer into the occluded oh, visual spectrum of possible futures, gaining an that insight. Was You're going to watch as this one takes one of its massive undead claws and smashes down where Polly isn't, but where he's going to be, as his zombie eye kind of flashes blue for a second. And uh, he's going to score a critical hit. Now, he's got to confirm that critical hit on yep. Polly. But uh, their what attacks... Hate animal companions? Does 16 confirm a critical hit on Polly? Um... I think it does. Find out. AC 16. Holly takes 35 damage. Oh. Mmm. Wham! Scratching into Polly's backside, tearing fur and flesh and muscle out. And Polly goes, Mwah. <laughs> Not happy, Polly. Yeah, Not happy, Polly. But we are back at the top of the round with a certain fix. Just watched uh, your weasel get messed up. Bix is going to um, shoot him in the face. In the eye? Right in his stupid eye. Um, and he's going to do it with uh, rapid shot. And... Uh, And then the gravity bow. Uh, Pathfinder, everybody. 2d6. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we know how it is. Yeah, okay. It's set up. Uh, okay. Hey, everybody. It's a Pathfinder. It's a so complicated. Or as we like to call it, a Mathfinder. Like the just... most complicated macro for me, for me have. I also just realized so, that the five query prompts. <laughs> five query prompts. There we go. Alright, now you can see the attacks. Alright. Twelve is unfortunately a miss, but the twenty-four is a hit for six. Into the one that attacked uh, a certain mm -hmm. certain weasel. Okay. So you watch as one of the arrows strikes the undead flesh, but appears to no do no significant damage. The other one strikes right into one of the rib bones, cracking it. You can see it's kind of a rib cage is exposed and it cracks it and it kind of like collapses a little bit in on itself. Like you've broken some of its structural integrity. It's undead zombie integrity, as it were. Anything else, Bix? Watch up. 
Mikael, you're hiding behind a pillar. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna check use... on that pillar. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I have some... Oh, well, I'm You'll busy. See shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a bunch of Cyclops. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go from cover to cover. What, where? Mikael, uh, as you go to move away from that black pillar, I need yes. you to give me a will save. <laughs> but, okay. Hold on, let me go back. Will save. Those are my my worst saves, of course. <laughs> oh man! Oh yes. my God! That is a thing. So as you go to move away, you don't realize mm -hmm. it at first, but you start to hear these crazy, scary whispers coming from well everywhere. And as you look over nice. at the black pillar, that that pillar, not black pillar, but that pillar of stone, kind of this like sandy looking pillar starts to look like a black obelisk and that black obelisk seems to have a multitude of angry one-eyed faces screaming Ugh. out from it and you're terrified of that black pillar and you want to run away from it you are currently yeah, under I, the effects of fear from i that run black away pillar. from it uh i guess backwards so i'm off the map <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's scary you, you, it's only within cool. about 30 feet of it so once you get outside of 30 feet you're good so yeah. Maneuver so I move yourself 30 to where feet, fit. and then I. So I move thirty feet, and then I. It does it stop? So yeah. I can move back. It stops. All right. I'll just walk along the side of this ledge thing and hide behind the rock Love in it. the end. Love <laughs> I guess. it. Yeah. Love it. All right. Still scary pillar, but you can't see it right now. Yeah. yeah. Eckert, you're Looking up next. Away from it. Casting divine favor and continuing to move forwards. Mm! Like the stone cold badass that he is. I can't believe you rolled a one twice in a row, Mikael. That is rough. That is rough. But oh, I like it. That sounds good. This one here is going to pick up a stone and it's going to throw it past the water fountain. It's like pool that's dried at Eckerd. Because, damn, it believes 23 is a miss. Especially because you have soft cover from that water fountain. So it just crashes into the water fountain, setting shards of stone all over the ground. It helps they need to roll a 20 to hit me with that throw attack. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Next up, we have a certain wizard on a certain cart. Well, sorcerer. Uh, ben is pissed. You fucking leave my weasel friend alone. He leaps up on the back of the horse, runs down its spine, jumps over its head, ends up here. Because um, I have extra movement. And then um, fires a scorching ray at uh, that. Mm. Uh, you have precise shot? No. It's fine. DC 14. <laughs> well, AC 14. Uh, does that not make Scorching Ray uh, its own attack? It's a touch attack. Range touch attack. Yeah, uh, for range four, I'm going to do seven. There's a scary over pillar over there. Bad juju. Zap, zap. I don't like that. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. It's 46. Ooh, nice. You burn off a significant portion of this creature's undead flesh. It moans, seemingly almost in pain, but it's likely more just a frustration or some sort of natural, like, innate response to being damaged. Like, it remembers pain. It doesn't actually feel mm -hmm. it. Love it. Love it. Hey, Bix, give me a perception check. Bix, Bix, Bix. Hey, Bix. I'm working on it. That pillar off the left is starting to glow black, too. Oh, great. Well, black All the pillars are haunted. Yeah, it's starting to get weird. And the area, the light in the area is starting to get dimmer and dimmer. Almost unnaturally. Fuck this shit. Ah, this one's going to charge towards a certain Eckerd. You're going to see its right. eye flash blue. It's going to crit hit you. And then it's going to roll the worm right. with a confirmed That's crit. 
Uh, that's confirmed. Can I do anything with hero points to stop that? Is that a thing uh, I can do? You can use a hero point to, to stop that. Be like, no, it's a regular hit. Or make it a regular hit. I like that. Yeah. All right. You're only going to take 2d6 plus 10 instead of 4d6 plus 20. 17 damage to clobber into you with the attack. Significantly better. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Polly the Weasel. He is a weasel. Um... I'm gonna have Polly disengage. Withdraw. I like it. Yep. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I like it. I like it. And that is gonna be his action. Beautiful. The zombie here, seeing that that person is left, is gonna skirt around the edge. Has to double move to get to here. That's gonna be its turn. Seems fixated on a certain venom. <laughs> Bix, you're up I can't imagine why. Oh, Eckert. Eckert, 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 Eckert. Yes. Give me a perception yes. check. No. Cool. You're very focused on the two zombie cyclopses that are thrown at you. From behind you, you all hear the army shouting, Hold the line! Go for the knees! Hold the line! <laughs> oh, baby. Which one are you attacking? Uh, the one that hurt Polly. Yes! Nice, solid blows into this thing. It's thump, thump. It is looking real like it's about to fall apart. It's looking real messed up. Real messed up. Anything else, Bix? Nope, that's it. Beautiful. Okay, L. Yeah, give me a perception check. Right? Okay, that's better. Hey, you know this pill over here? Starting to glow a little one? bit up there. Up there, yeah. this one. This one right here, off the left hand side. Let's get a little, little, little black, okay. little black glowy tendrils. Right, is spreading. <laughs> uh, all right, that's not great, but I'll just stay far away from that, and that's fine. I like it. Uh, I'm gonna charge this cyclops that's been hurt. Whoa, let's go! And as a swift action, I will draw my hidden dagger from my wrist sheath. You know what's gonna perception check you? Yeah. To five, do, it. do it. I doubt it, but we can check. Let's check. I rolled because it was funny, not because I thought it'd succeed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked. Uh, all right. Cool. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Fucking beautiful. See, the thing about Mikhail is they're good at fighting people, not monsters, especially not undead, because uh, they are immune to non-lethal damage, and I don't like that. <laughs> But yeah, let's see how this will go. Uh, mm. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. Good Solid nice, blow. Man. You stab into like its knee, and you like carve out its kneecap, and its knee kind of buckles a little bit, but it's still standing. It smells right. terrible. Yeah, it? Eckerd Gers, you are technically surrounded but also technically exactly where you want to be. I can swing in any direction. Uh, he's going to use a swift action to uh, use fervor to swift action cast uh, your moderate wounds. Mm, get it. With, for awful healing. Not great. No, that was, that was pretty You're bad. surrounding them if you think about it. Yes, and then he's going to uh, swing at the one to the south, so the one that everyone's fighting. Oh yeah. Only for 10. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Eckerd's all like, oh look, one of those guys turns around. Ah, and you slash down its backside near the lower back and you carve into its spine, severing it, and the creature just collapses to the ground, seeming to fall into a pile of gore and muck. And that is one dead zombie cyclops. Well done, sir. Ooh. What's he got? Nice. That's all I have. Beautifully. Beautifully it's done. A swift and a standard. The zombie cyclops here, seeing its opportunity, seeing its opportunity, is actually going to double move right up to here, climbing through the fountain, smashing it out of the way and getting right up next to Eckerd. Venowar, you're up next. Hey, Venowar, give me a perception check. It's probably nothing. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. 22. Hey. You know this pillar over there? Right over there. Um, mm. Black tendrils lancing out. They all seem mm. to be coalescing into the center of the uh, of the ruin. 
Uh, we gotta pick up the pace. It looks like we're being trapped. It's very unclear. Who knows? You know what? Give uh, me a give me a knowledge religion, or a knowledge. You know, I'll even take a knowledge arcana. It's a higher DC on knowledge arcana, but you you might be able to know what's going on. Ah, uh, fortunately, that's not good enough. However, if you describe what's happening and let Eckerd make a knowledge religion, he might know what's about to happen. Eckerd, we got tendrils on four corners, and it appears to be converging on the center. That out of evil scanning DC 15. You are 100% sure within about the next round or two that this whole area is going to be flooded with negative energy. Negative energy. <laughs> uh, then Mavar backs up and then shoots with his uh, musket. Love it. Which one? Uh, the one that's in the fountain. Mm -hmm. So he's the only one in range now. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Specifically because I moved out of range. Beautiful. Oh, come on! That is real unfortunate. Uh, confirm, uh, I confirm the crit miss? Is that what? Uh, you don't confirm the crit miss. Excellent. That's good. You just, you just shit like fires, but the bullet doesn't come out. Ah, uh, my musket's jammed. Now I gotta Damn, no. clear it. Yeah, that sucks. Ah, uh, that blows. But you know what doesn't blow? The zombie right here, who sees its opportunity to go all in on a certain accurate. So it's gonna swing at you twice. That would be bad. 24 is a miss. Yes. 28 is a hit. 28 hits. And it is going to smash down on you for 15 points of damage. Kablam! Wow. Well, you do with its undead zombie hands. Polly the Weasel. Polly the Weasel. What's Polly going to do? Uh, Polly is going to uh, continue retreating back to uh, Bix. I love it. I absolutely love it. Next up, this zombie cyclops here is dead, so it just kind of stays dead. Bix, we're back to you. Uh, Bix is going to heal Polly. I love that that is a decision you have made. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the only love decision it. to make. Polly's a G. Love Polly. Yeah. Some might even say Polly's the best of us. Uh, I would agree with that. Well, I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Next up, Mikael. You watch as these strange kind of greenish looking chains of energy start to appear all mm. around the center of this old, what appears to be an old temple of some kind. You still just time. within these walls, then? It's just within the walls, correct. Okay. All of these... Looks a little something like... It looks a little something like this. Hmm. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, that's, right. that's not ominous at all. Yeah, it's very ominous. Well, if these things are about to get healed, then there's no point in hacking them. Uh, I'd rather go out. Uh, and I would also tell Eckhart that maybe we should get out. <laughs> in case he doesn't see the these Oh, you see it. Chains. You see yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. It's all there. It's And you know it's coming. You know it's coming. So I will go behind here, and I will ready an attack. Eckhart Gerst, if... you're up next. Yeah. Ready an attack. Beautiful. Yeah. Kurd is going to uh, use Fervor to heal himself, just straight up 2d6. Beautiful. Or very bad again. And uh, take a withdraw action. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. Is this in or out? That is, that is, that is right there is in. That's the end, end okay. of it. That's the end of it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, right there, even though it shows, um, that is just... Out. That is just outside <clears> this <throat> range. So let me actually shrink it down a little bit. There you go. All right. Yeah. No. He he just wants to be in front of. Uh, just just inside of the area. In front you would of all that, can help it. Watch. The zombie cyclops here is going to move up to the edge, and is going to take a swing at Eckert because he's right there. Twenty four is a miss. Clangs into your armor. You knock it back with your shield. You are a badass. Venowar, you're up next. Um, 
I do not have the talent that lets me clear a uh, jam as a move action. So I guess I use a standard to clear my jam. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and then I, jam. That's right. And then I step behind Eckert because <laughs> he's a much better shield than nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's my that's my whole that's my whole deal. That's my You're whole good, deal. Though. One here, seeing its opportunity, is going to move up to the edge of the wall. And you know what? It's also going to attack Eckert. He's right there. Twenty-eight. Oh, he gets a hit. hit. He gets a hit. Fifteen damage again. Eckert's looking a little beat up. I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about what's about to happen. Polly's looking a little better. Not as good, but what's Polly been doing? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Polly is going to. Uh, yeah, Polly's just gonna uh, rest. Next. These are, You're up next. These are not a, a Polly opponent. Uh, all right, Polly or uh, Bix is going to uh, shoot this one. Fifteen um, eight. That is a hit. Both hits. Both hits. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. Okay, out. Well, the explosion hasn't gone off yet, but since we're attacking this, I might as well attack it too. I take out another hidden dagger. I'm not going to bother rolling because it cannot see it. (laughs) And I'll yeet it. Yeet! Uh, Yeet! Yeet! Uh, Let's say, go through my five queries. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Beautiful damage on that one. Beautiful damage. Epic Gerst. Going to use an- yet another fervor and cast a cure moderate wounds to swift action. That's his last second level spell, and wow, these are bad. Yep. Uh, he's gonna five foot step and swing at the one that uh, here, Sarah. Mikhail just hit. Don't you dare die on me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh... Oh, there we Ooh. go. That's a solid Big blow. Hits. That's Big a solid damage. blow. However, certain zombie cyclops sees an opportunity. Sixteen is a miss. Thirty-one is a hit. Oh, oh, oh dear yeah. God, mm. this could be the end. Sixteen damage to Eckert from that zombie. Benoir. It's fine. Benoir. Certain <laughs> certain war priest of Abadar is looking a little, yeah. little, little beat up. Fen takes a five foot step and then casts Burning Hand. Yes. To catch both of these guys. <laughs> You know what their best best save is? Reflex. Reflex. Doubt Ooh, it. that was actually pretty oh. good. <laughs> that was terrible. No. Uh, so they'll take fourteen and seven respectively. Nice. So the one that you've been battling on takes fourteen. The other one only <coughs> takes seven. This uh, how bad so- do they look? They, this one right here looks pretty messed up. Like it's about to drop. Uh. I will use a hero point and cast Burning Hands a second time. Yes, let's go! So it's a D, uh, still a DC 15 to yeah. get away from 16. So oh! So imagine, if you will, that he's like, ah! 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 And he's, ah! Yeah, that's exactly how I'm imagining it, actually. <laughs> and the one right here <laughs> so drops to the ground. I do have to make the reflex save. I'm going to assume he fails. Four, he fails. All right, the other one's going to make his reflex save. A two, he fails, so he takes full damage as well. That one's looking pretty okay. But as we go to Polly's turn, we watch as this dark necrobatic energy fills this temple. And these black and green kind of like necromantic looking tendrils start to wrap around this last Cyclops. And well, he looks like he's just been empowered with some crazy necromantic energy, which is probably not a good thing. It also looks like he's been healed up some, not too much, but a little bit, but he looks like he's ready to party. He's ready to go to clown town. He, in fact, Looks like it might be under the effects of a haste spell. So that's something you might want to deal with. However, Sweet. it's Polly's turn. What's Polly going to do? All right. Polly's going to snake himself under uh, Bix, and the two of them are going to rush up to uh, um, Eckerd. Good news is, though, that creepy thing has disappeared. 
and all the black tendrils that were dancing around those pillars all dissipate into black mist. Dun dun dun! Good thing these things are vulnerable to fire, huh, buddy? Yeah. It's the battle plan, Bixie. Yep, yep. Uh, Bix is going to heal Eckert. Ooh, yeah! Get in there! Shove your healing potions up his butt. Uh, yeah. Or don't. Just pour it on that's, him down his throat. That's, that's probably better that's, use. Um, <laughs> or he's you, just going to Did you know it. that a cure moderate potions are a suppository? That's awkward. Oh, All right. God. Let's move on. Let's move on. With that being said. Why would a potion be a suppository? <laughs> you know what? It's a fantasy world. Things are weird. <laughs> Increases healing absorption. That's how you get her in there. <laughs> It doubles the healing effects! Why oh, didn't they yeah. make it into a pill? <laughs> That's real dumb. Yeah. Uh, nice! There we go! 12 HP I, back. I, I love that his cure lights are being more effective than my cure moderates. I love it so much. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Thank you. Mikael, you're up next. I'm doing my best, buddy. Uh, well, I kinda... I almost kinda wanna go up through the flank, but not that badly. So. I think you should do it. I know I can't attack it if I flank, so I won't do that. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just throw another dart at it. A secret dagger. Another. Uh, a secret. Yeah. Secret yeah, dart. I like it. Yeah, they're always hold on, hold on. Let me see if we can see it. All, Eight. All... <laughs> no. Uh, Are you sure? Roll the stealth yeah. check just in case. If if I roll a one and he rolls a twenty, it's not good enough. So. <laughs> you never know. But I'll try it. There. Fine. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. Just for you. Okay. Right, You're good. There. You're good. Just cool. want to make sure. Yeah, it just we gotta play by the rules and everything. Let's yeah. go. Uh, all right. I love it. Here's oh, the there it is. There it is. I'll five foot step forward so I can That's maybe it. flank next turn. At first, <laughs> you're feeling a little less winded, but still pretty fucked up. Yeah, he's going to uh, defensively cast at this point a cure light wounds. Uh, the concentration check is seven, so my defensive casting is eleven. With yeah, mm. that is enough. Oh, that's worth it. You're like wounds is where it's at. Let's go. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> and he's also going to fervor for two d six with a swift action. Let's oh, go. go. He's looking good. And yeah. He's going to step up in front of this thing. Let's go. Ready to be clobbered some more for the it party. It is ready benefit. to go. It's going to ready to clobber you. It's going to clobber you. In fact, it's going to go it, in. I bet Nineteen it will. is a miss. Twenty three is a miss. It gets its third yes. swift attack. Ooh, oh, is that, that is a miss. That is a miss? No. His AC is 28 right now. Let's go! So it's like clang, clang, clang. You feel the rush of positive energy into yourself, Eckerd. You're just like, no, no. And you say, I don't know, what do you say? Something epic about the power of Avatar. You got to say something. <laughs> no. No, one-liners suck. <laughs> All right. You, you feel it in your heart, though. You feel it in your heart. You feel a cheesy one-liner. It's glorious. Venowar, you're up next. That's for next Monday. For the superhero RPG. Oh, oh. cheesy one. Uh, ben, will, ben will use another scorching ray. Mm, let's go. Uh, let's DC go. 16. Uh, Come on. Oh, no, sorry. I got to hit him. I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Just, that's not a that's not attack. Oh, it's, that's not an attack roll. Shit. 13 is a hit. Oh no! Actually, that would be a miss because it's in it's in it's in close combat. You don't have precise shot. DC is fourteen. Pursue fate finder. <laughs> you want to spend a hero point? I, I only have one left. Well, might be you important. have a war to fight. <laughs> might be important. I don't know. Yeah, I'll spend the hero point. All right, roll the damage. I'll peer pressure them into. Yes. <laughs> Got to make them use all of their resources on this random encounter. It's going to be great. Uh, which is 46 go. points of damage. Excellent. It's all going as the apostles have planned. God free Sinus Lock. Just as I planned. Uh, 18 yes, points right. of fire damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a solid blow. Polly is still underneath Bix. Bix, what are you going to do with Polly? Uh, <clears throat> Polly is going to uh 
rush forward and attack. Mm. Get in there, Polly. Do your thing. Get in there. Get in there. You glorious son of a bitch. Uh, and he is... Let's go. Let's go. Mm. Mm. 27 for 7. Solid blow. Polly tears away some of its undead flesh, spitting it out of the ground and hissing at the zombie. Now it is Bix's turn. Uh, Bix is going to uh, cast... Uh, what the hell is that spell called again? I just had it up a second ago. I love it. Um, spell finder. Let's go. Yeah, he's going to cast <laughs> Pouncing Fury. I love your, love your right. smile. Axel, whenever we make fun of Pathfinder, you're just like, <laughs> yep, that's true. That's glorious. <laughs> uh, he's oh, going to cast Pouncing Fury on uh, uh, Polly. I love it. I love it. I don't know what that does, but it sounds amazing. The guy it, out. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, when I do a charge, uh, he can attack with all of his claws instead Beautiful. of just one. Beautiful. The guy you're up next. That's, uh, five foot. Another hidden dart. Ooh, ooh, and ooh, ooh, throw ooh. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, here we go. Am I going to miss? Finally. No. I'm not very good at I refuse. throwing darts. I don't, so I don't know why. Reality. That is a hit. I don't know why I keep hitting. <laughs> it's no looking way. like it's about to discorporate and the power of the god of money himself flowing yeah. through you. A cheesy you one it. liner billowing I believe. in your belly. You feel say it. it. You want to it scream. Does, it, 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 I, I don't want to say No, no. It's not happening. Happening. Yeah. I hate one-liners. If, if you miss, uh... <laughs> Your taxes have come due! Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no. He hits him, and as he falls down, Eckert just, or, uh, Ven just goes, cha-ching. Ah! Let's go. Oh! Out. That is a hit. That is a kill shot. You yes. bring your sword up. Lunging it into the creature's stomach. Tearing out its back uh, spine and kind of cu cutting it partially in half. The power of this just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful warrior of God and money defeats this evil zombie. And as it does so, shot. from behind, you hear the roars of the army, you hear the shouts that they've defeated their enemies as well. And with that, we come to the closure of this random encounter. However, like y'all to make some perception checks on this area, if you would be so kind. Let's see if you can find something. So it's a, it's a high perception check, but we'll see if you can I'm maybe find some of the old stuff. Fallback strategy before I do, and then do that, and I'm gonna keep that one. Thirty. Thirty. Holy son of a biscuit! So, so you find a small ancient chest that has some. Cyclops like writing hieroglyphs, you could say, on it. It's hieroglyphs? Are they hieroglyphs? Hieroglyphs? Ah! <laughs> sure, they're hieroglyphs. There it is. I like that. That's actually a missed opportunity on my part, and I love it. Uh... <laughs> but you actually will find some of these hieroglyphs there. And inside of it, you will find a phylactery of positive channeling as well as 1d6 Cure Serious Wounds potions. And if only we had a cleric. I have a wand of Cure Life. One Cure Serious potion. <laughs> Who wants a Cure Serious potion? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? It was a uh, You know what, that's lame. Wand? You find at least four, because fuck that roll. That was stupid. No, that four. was so good. No, though. it was so good. All right, you find <laughs> Yeah, the others have been so good. smashed and crashed. There it is. Yeah. Nice. Did we accidentally crash them while opening the thing? Yeah, we probably <laughs> even you, know what? you know what? Yes. <laughs> All right. That's it's hilarious. still wet. Eckerd Ecker sees the phylactery of positive like channeling and goes, damn it, we don't have a cleric. But it is what it is. Just <laughs> eats the chest away, breaks three posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I love that. I love that. So good. So good. So good. All right. So we're going to pivot away from here, as I like to say. 
to the Overland. And the, the outcome of this battle is that, well, honestly, you lost like two people. They did get killed by the Cyclopses, but they were able to defeat their Cyclopses. You defeated your Cyclopses, and because I'm a benevolent GM, you guys are actually going to level up at the end of this session as well, because I think <laughs> getting an extra level is going to be good. What's that bring you? Level 6? Level 7? Yep, six. Level six. 6. I think level 6 is a good level for you guys to be at. Level 6. <laughs> and just thinking as you level make your way <laughs> towards... I think I get another spell level out of it. You do. Oh, yeah, I get level three spells. You do. It's important. It's going to be important. Make your way level up and seven. over. You skirt the edge of Lake Silversteep. It takes you several more days to travel with the army up to and near the walls of Lensington. And I'd like to know from you all, what is the plan of attack? Now, Blau, Eckerd, you had mentioned to me a couple of ideas. Mikael, you had some ideas based on your conversation with the High Priestess. How do you plan to assault the city? I know there was like mention of maybe like doing some espionage some sneaking fill me in because our last session of this game is going to be the actual assault on linsington it's going to be the the battle taking the city and then defeating the lieutenant the apostle lieutenant who happens to be in control of the city at this point it's gonna be our epic conclusion of charles of solaria broken oath so kind of our tail end of this session i'd just like to get a battle plan from you all so I can do my best to try and ruin it next session. All right. So just give me all your yeah. secrets. That's what I want. Yeah, you always ruin our plans when we make them, huh? Or wait, <laughs> no, that actually <laughs> never happens. It's been hard. I'm trying. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, I I have of course told people that we have people on the inside that can open the fort gate. Beautiful. All right. So it's so that's four, out four not average. Excellent. If four is not average. I'll take an eight. So what's the um, plan, gentlemen? So I mean my plan was to get some people into the city either with the with the uh thespians or otherwise. Perfect. Have them take the gate and signal the army who is waiting, you know, within visual range of the city or having scouts in visual range of the city with a alchemist fire or something similar to make a big poof on the gate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh have you know? Have them throw the gates open and have the army march in. If we can manage to hold the gate for the next, you know, <laughs> ten minutes, I love it. I absolutely love it. And where will you all be? What is your personal plan? I mean, I'm going in with the uh, uh, players good. so that I can be. Beautiful. Yeah. Good, good, good. Like Should we all go in the with the players? With the players, you could all that go might in not be a bad idea. And then what? you have uh, Dawkin lead the army in. For that Maybe. matter, I mean, we could take the gate. That or... would be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could do that okay, so you guys could hold the gate for a couple of rounds while the army gets yeah. in. And then once the army's in, you guys could make the assault on the inner cloister and go defeat yeah. the Apostle Lieutenant, who is currently in charge of the city. I like that. You know what? I was looking at third level spells and I just realized Fireball is one of them. I guess I take Fireball. Ah, yeah, let's go! Yeah. Fire Fireball is yeah. pretty good. That's a pretty good spell. That's a great spell for holding the gate. I'm just saying. Fireball and haste. You know, third level spells are real good. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, gentlemen, uh, I just want to say thank you so much. This has been a fun adventure. I am, I'm, I'm, it's a little bittersweet to know that next session is probably going to be our last. Unless, I guess, you know, it just takes forever. But it's probably going to be our last. So I hope all of the viewers, you guys, tune in next week for the epic conclusion of Trials of Solaria Broken Oaths. I intended this to be longer, but they came up with really good ideas and ruined a lot of my content. Because um, they're like, we make we make an alliance with the Shadow Monster. I was like, you do what? We make an alliance with the Shadow Monster. We hired to kill the kill the Apostle. I'm sorry, what? We do this thing. I was like, well, that ruins like three sessions of intrigue. Um, so that's fine. No, it's good. I'm not mad. I actually yeah. loved it. You guys were very smart. It's a very good group. And uh, they're right. you're right. Ugh, players. Damn it. No, it's so yeah. good. You guys did a great job, and it's been it's been a blast. So. Um, definitely catch these fine folks here next Wednesday, same game time, same game place for the epic conclusion, hopefully epic conclusion, or the epic flop where they all lose and get killed at, while holding the gate Always uh. of Trials of Slaughter Broken House. And I want to be very clear, your endeavors here will make or break how hard it is for the children of Solaria to retake the capital. Also... I will be running a Q&A with all of the players that have been part of the Trials of Solaria. Although I've only streamed Broken Oaths, I have done one or two other one-shots of, of Trials of Solaria. Um, I'm going to be doing a Q&A that I probably won't 
stream, but I intend to record just so I have it. And all of the players have been a part of, of Trials of Solari or any sort of the Solari adventures, both the short adventurers as well as the campaigns will be invited to sit down with a round table with me and just ask questions. You know, if you have lingering questions about what was this mean? What did this mean? What was that? What was this? Um, and we'll be able to be doing that. But with that being said, as I always like to say to every session, thank you to the players for playing. Thank you to the viewers for viewing. Happy gaming, everybody. And I hope that Brian and Symbol have fun playing Hunt <laughs> after this session. But good night. Be well. We'll see you next week for the finale of Broken Oaths. Good night.